Welcome to another bonus episode of The Dark Parade. My name is Bo, and I am a found footage fool. Tell me the camera thing isn't annoying. Yeah, it's annoying. So welcome back to Found Footage Fool, uh, yet another tiny little division of The Dark Parade. This is a an ongoing series of bonus episodes in which I look at uh, specifically found footage movies in an attempt to make some kind of sense of, uh, of my obsession with these movies and also to recommend and or warn you away uh, from these types of films depending on their quality. I like to approach this with a bit of science, as regular listeners will know. I'm not trying to give you some subjective look at these movies that you know anybody could give you no 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 i'm applying actual science to all of this and i have five established criteria uh for measuring the relative success of one of these found footage movies and the subject of today's episode is a movie entitled the dark web tapes now the dark web tapes is not to be confused with the dark tapes which we also covered uh, here on on Found a Footage Fool, and the dark well, the dark tapes is okay. There's interesting ideas in it, and it, it's you know it's an anthology, so it's kind of hit or miss, mostly miss, but it's at least somewhat ambitious. You know, it it's trying to uh, do something with the mythology of demons and so forth, and I, I you know credit where credits due, right? Now, we then come to the Dark Web Tapes, and this came out about four years after the Dark Tapes. A Google search would have told them that their title was very similar to another movie. You decide if that was intentional or not. But regardless of the intent, the Dark Web Tapes is a much more DIY kind of movie. It, Based on what IMDb has to say about it, uh, it, it was made for about $10,000, and I still am not convinced that that money ended up on the screen. Um, $10,000 seems like a lot of money to make this movie, but, you know, alright, look, I'm gonna try to be somewhat kind where I can. But the dark web tapes, just spoilers, not very good. Uh, also, you can find this under the title Dark Web The Mystery Box, regardless I'm probably going to tell you to avoid it, but but before I give you recommendations and ratings and all that fun stuff, let's apply the science. Let's be scientific about this. So, uh, we start with criteria number one, which is, of course, keeping the camera on. Is there a reason to keep the camera on? And so, for the most part, this is the strong suit of the dark web tapes because... Most of it is done in that YouTube vlogger kind of style of somebody just staring at a camera, talking to the camera. Uh, one of the vloggers is a horror review guy who has a bunch of DVDs and Blu-rays of horror movies, but he is not, in fact, um, recommending a movie or reviewing a movie, he is uh, exploring the dark web. Not even exploring the dark web. He's, he's like, hey, somebody sent me a link to the dark web, and I logged on, and here's some shit that happened. But it turns out what happened was that he, like, they took all of his money and uh, harassed him a little bit, and so he got offline. Um, kind of end of story, which is interesting in that... Okay, it's not interesting. So... Then the, the, uh, there are kind of three stories going on here, one of which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. But you've got the guy, Chauncey, who was the horror movie review guy. Then you've got Hannah, who is played by, and her segment is directed as well by her, uh, an actress by the name of Jennifer Nangle? Nagle? Something like that? N-A-N-G-L-E? And she is best known in quotes for having done uh, a series of kind of Elvira inspired bits where she plays Malvolia uh, a, a kind of horror hostess uh, sort of character and I will say 
Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. I'm gonna I'm gonna reserve discussion of her performance in a minute. But um, her segment is all about uh, being a YouTuber who does like uh, makeup tutorials and makeup unboxing and that kind of thing. And so that makes sense for keeping the camera on, of course. And then you have this third story that is about a woman who kills her husband and then gets attacked by some kind of skull creature and it doesn't make a ton of sense as to what's happening here but okay and that one less so the keeping the camera on so let's say generously like a, a four out of five in terms of keeping the camera on so th look this is as good as it's gonna get and and let's try to be uh, again generous where we can then we get to the characters. Are the characters interesting? Are they annoying? Are they worth following? Do they evoke any sense of empathy? What characters ought to do in a movie, right? Make you root for them, make you care about them, make you worry for them in a horror movie. And th this is a bit of a stumbling block because for the character of Chauncey, this, you know, over-the-top horror movie review guy, he comes across as more irritating than likable. So that's tough to get behind. And then you have the character of Hannah, who is the makeup tutorial lady. And here I would say that she's at least empathetic or, or certainly worthy of uh, our concern. And we'll get to watchability in a second. They, like she does a, an adequate job. Like the character itself is real thin. Most of what you know about her is... The fact that she hosts this unboxing makeup video show. And also, as time goes on, that, oh, her brother had committed suicide and she starts receiving packages that are a little ominous and menacing. And so, yes, that evokes a little bit of sympathy in a viewer, but it doesn't come at a fast enough pace for you to really care about her because most of her segment is just the makeup stuff. And that's pretty boring unless that's what you're into. And in that case, why would you be watching the dark web tapes if what you're after is makeup tutorials? So I think the character as written is a little misbegotten, but I don't think she does a bad job. And I don't think the character is that off-putting. As far as the segment with the wife and the husband and the monster... There is no character at all. It's just a thing that happens in front of your eyes, and it only lasts for maybe 90 seconds, maybe two minutes. It's just a whole lot of nothing. So, as far as characters go, again, let's be generous and give it, like, a two and a half. So, then we come to authenticity. I would say that the authenticity level is fairly high, except for that one segment uh, where the husband and wife are killing each other and being attacked by foam monsters. That just doesn't make any sense. And I don't understand what the point of it is. Uh, but as far as everything else goes, the authenticity level of like, Oh, this looks like somebody that would be doing a, a YouTube channel. Sure. Sure. Let's again, let's be generous. Let's give this a, a solid three out of five. Then we come to watchability. Let me tell you, folks, this is a slog. I cannot believe that this movie is what this movie is. So, as I said, there is this, you know, character of Hannah who is doing the this makeup tutorial video channel or web channel. And most of the movie is her doing her makeup channel. It's her talking about makeup and how she puts it on and how to make her eyes pop and how to make her lips pop and how much she loves shimmer makeup. It goes on forever. I mean, this movie is like an hour, 15, hour, 20, something like that. I would argue a full half of that runtime is the makeup tutorial. And look, I am not one to say that uh, I know everything about making movies. Sure, I've written a couple that got made you can argue the quality of those, but I like to think that I at least understand the mechanics of how a movie ought to work. And having half of your movie 
be establishing what this person does doesn't leave a lot of room for action and evolution and the character's journey and all of that stuff. And even in a low budget DIY kind of thing, I have look, I have so much room for a low budget effort that is ambitious and trying to do something. Like I said, the the dark tapes, I don't necessarily like that movie and I don't think it's entirely successful, but it's at least going for stuff and there are stories that are happening. There is not a story in this. There is Hannah doing her makeup stuff and then getting a box of shit that suggests that somebody like grabbed a noose from where her brother committed suicide and has a video of it and you know dark web stuff but this doesn't happen until the last few minutes of this movie where she unboxes this stuff she calls the police they're like uh there's a pile up so we can't really send anybody and then she gets hanged and then there's a jump scare at the end where she's like laying on a black tarp and just wakes up none of that makes sense none of it really has any uh any forward momentum or any sense of resolution it's just stuff that happens and a movie isn't just stuff that happens like this movie is not my dinner with andre where you have two engaging intellectual characters debating one another through the course of the film it's just hannah looking at the screen and talking about makeup for for the most part oh i left out one there was another segment where there's another makeup girl who put some stuff on her face that she got from the dark web and it makes her face bleed and then that's it. And I don't know if any of this stuff is supposed to hang together, if this is supposed to be telling some more coherent story that I am just too dim to divine from the things that happen in this movie. Just nothing happens. And when it does, it happens very fast and it doesn't seem to be connected to anything else. And so, again, hard to get interested in a movie that doesn't seem to be going out of its way to tell its audience what they should be caring about and and what the threat is what is the threat that yes there occasionally you'll see this dark figure kind of lurking around in the shadows but i are they from the dark web are they sending the boxes i presume why are they doing this is it just because they're crazy like have the threat be something knowable and definable at least in the sense that i can i can say what the character is in danger of you know like there's not a threat of her being killed until she's killed but then she's not killed because she pops out at the end i mean oh my god again in the interest of trying to score watchability it took me a couple of times to get through because of the first time i got to about the 45 minute mark of this movie and had been doing nothing but watching these makeup tutorials with an occasional moment where she's on the phone and getting bad news or something and that's it and i had to turn it off because i was like i don't know if i can finish this there i don't nothing has happened you know even the thing with the guy chauncey who's the horror movie review uh web channel guy it's just him talking about like oh i went on the the dark web and there's all kinds of weird shit there oh my god my bank account's drained everybody leave me alone oh i guess i'm off youtube now it, all of this stuff doesn't add to anything and it is really difficult to watch and you know recently when we talked about the movie black wake which is also not very good but even that had some semblance of story like things happened it didn't make a ton of sense and it certainly doesn't come together all that well but it's at least something and this is nothing uh, it, it really is frustrating that people took the time to actually make this thing because I, you know, I've seen some of Bad Ben. I that's a thing that maybe we'll get into somewhere down the road with uh, the the Found Footage Fool series. But even that has way more going on than the dark web tapes, which is is just nothing. It's nothing. It it drove me crazy people so <laughs> anyway i'm really frustrated by this uh that that like people spent time and money to make this thing that is the exact opposite of whatever entertainment is and it's not boredom although there is some of that but there's just a, a general sense of like head scratching what the fuck did somebody waste their time doing this for i say that mostly because 
uh, Jennifer Nangle, 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 who plays Hannah, seems kind of talented. Seems to have like a, a an idea of how to deliver lines and and be in the moment in the scene and so forth. I don't think she's terrible. Certainly, the best thing about this, but if the one likable actor slash character that you have in your movie is still sitting around doing makeup tutorials for a bunch of horror fans, what the fuck are we doing here, people? So it's, it, it is frustrating. Uh, watchability zero. It's a, a, a big fat zero. This movie is not watchable. It is painful. And, and which brings us to our fifth and final criteria, which is scares. And, like I said, there's just no way that you could be scared by anything that happens in the movie because nothing fucking happens in the movie. And when it does, it's just so random that there's no way to be frightened by it. There's no tension in this movie. There's no dread. There's no sense of what the real threat is. It, it Yes. So that's a big fat zero as well. And so to give this movie a final score, I would say it's like a one, a one star out of five kind of deal. And the only reason I'm even giving it the one star is because I think Jennifer Nangle is somewhat engaging, if not well served by this material. I know she directed herself in this, but she needed an editor. She needed somebody to say, like, you need to have more stuff happening in this for this to be a movie. Uh, it, yeah, it, it's a real, a real something. And I don't recommend that you ever watch it. It's on, like, Amazon Prime and plex or tubi or some of those again if you're like me and you're just plumbing the depths of found footage movies you run across these every so often but please stay far far away from the dark the dark web tapes it is not worth your time it is not a great movie uh it's barely even a movie at all like you have to use movie in quotes um so yeah a real bummer the next time i'm gonna go out of my way to try to find a good one I'm, I'm going to, I might circle around to the bay, uh, might be the next found footage fool that we do, but something that's a little bit above and beyond what happens in a movie like this. We've done a couple of cheap ones. Now let's do a found footage movie. That's got a little bit of budget behind it. And at the very least, it will give us something to talk about besides how angry I was watching this movie and feeling like it was doing nothing but wasting my time and the times of the uh the the creators of of this work so anyway as ever thank you for listening to the found footage full thank you for subscribing to the dark parade uh please 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 uh do yourselves and me a big favor rate and review the show uh where that option is available to you uh, please feel free to drop by the Facebook group, which is facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash dark parade, uh, where you can see all the latest goings on and, and find notices for when, uh, we're going to be live on, on the YouTube, uh, doing a little bit of video broadcasting of our own and, uh, joining in that conversation. Um, you can also find me on Twitter at dark parade pod. Uh, which uh, will allow you to, uh, you know, at me, DM me, whatever the, the kids are saying these days. Uh, what else? Uh, YouTube.com forward slash Legion Podcasts is where you can find uh, the live video of uh, our Sinister Sundays. And uh, also, uh, if you're so inclined, you can check out uh, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, which is another show I do with my friend Duncan McLeish, who will soon, soon, people be making an appearance here on the dark parade uh as i enlist his aid along with uh doug tilly to talk about a movie that doug recommended so um that is it for this time thank you so so much for listening uh please uh share it around if you are enjoying these things if you enjoy hearing me uh lose my absolute nut over a movie that should never have been made uh like the dark web tapes and uh, we'll be back again to do this soon. Uh, new episodes coming Wednesday. More coming later this month. Uh, it is uh, here in February. It is listener request month. So get ready. There's a lot of weird shit coming down the pipe. Um, all right. That's enough. Thank you as ever for joining the Dark Parade. We'll see you next time.